Hey everyone, in today's video, we're gonna talk about a media stock that dipped almost 6% today in the market. We're gonna talk about what happened out there, why did it dip, what news did they announce. Then we're gonna go into some videos of the CEO explaining the, the moves, uh, some market analysts talking about it before ending this video talking about the valuation of the company and just my overall thoughts on the company and the moves that they announced today. If you like this type of content, be sure to subscribe to this channel definitely give me a big thumbs up and would love to hear from you in the comments if you have any thoughts on any of this. So as you can tell by now by looking at the screen, the company we're talking about is Warner Brothers Discovery. So Warner's Brother Discovery stock dipped today 6% from about 15 bucks a share down to 14 bucks a share. And this was entirely driven by the naming and rollout of their joint streaming service between HBO Max and Discovery Plus um, that they announced today. So we're going to get into that, but before getting to that, I just want to do a bit of background on the evolution of the stock price of this company. Over the last year since they've merged together, the stock price is actually down almost 50%. And within that time period, there's been a lot of volatility. So when we look at this over a past six months, we can see the stock down in the nine and even in the eights. So the stock almost doubled up to 15 before going down a buck here today. This company has a market cap of $34 billion, but they have almost $50 billion in debt. So their total value is closer to $80 billion that you're paying if you take out the debt of the company. So very in debt company, especially with interest rates where they are, that's probably one of the main reasons why the stock's down 50% over the last year. But maybe more important from an operational standpoint, they haven't been able to hit revenue growth targets that they initially mapped out with this merger and their EBITDA numbers are very off where they thought they would be at this point. They still think it'll turn around. They're taking lots of one-time hits and lots of restructuring charges, but this merger has just been a very challenging endeavor, especially in a time that the broader media space has gotten hammered with profitability concerns, competition, multiple contraction, and the, the full nine yards on it. So Definitely a, a, a tough stock to have owned over the, the last year if, if you've been an investor in this stock. But let's talk about the future and what was announced here today. Today they announced that they were going to be revealing, or today they, they revealed that they were going to be combining their two current streaming services into one called Max. So Max will have um, all of the Warner Brother Discovery, Warner Brother HBO Max assets as long with the Discovery Plus assets. And one of the biggest sticking points is it's going to charge $15.99 a month, which is the exact same price that HBO Max is charging right now. I think that surprised many people. David Zasloff, the CEO, talks a lot about making sure that streaming's profitable and all of the value that they're going to be bringing with the Discovery assets coming into HBO Max. So I think most people thought they were going to charge a premium um, and maybe increase profitability behind that. He explains why later in this video he decided to line price it at $15.99. Some other um, information here, just scrolling through the CNBC article, you can see some of the titles that um, Warner Brothers owns on their HBO service, Succession, White Lotus, House of the Dragon, um, et cetera, et cetera. So they've talked a couple times about the role of each of these players and each of these streaming services. And it seems like Warner Brothers Discovery has lots of the high ticket, high budget content that gets people to subscribe in droves to the channel. Um, I think the concern with this streaming channel is that after they're done binging the series that they joined, lots of people drop off and churn is very high. Whereas on Discovery, it's a lot less volatile, stable, slow growth in terms of subscriber growth but they don't really see many people leave the channel and, and the streaming service. And that may be because it's a bit lower price today and we'll get into pricing, um, I believe in the next uh, video. But in, in general, it's just the type of content, um, it, it's, it's so much content and, and just content that you can put on in the background uh, while doing things around the house or when you're just bored. And it, it really is, is sticky and, and gives people something to watch so they never feel like there's nothing going on. So mending these two together, they think the value equation um, will be positive for a consumer and they can synergize a lot of the back end costs to make this business a lot more profitable overall. 
I want to start off by just playing um, a video for you guys and I'll stop throughout it just to give some opinions but I think this will help give some perspective on on this move day for Warner Brothers discovery not so much as far as investors are concerned the stock dropping four and a half percent at the moment as the company announces a big change for its streaming platform. With the details, Yahoo Finance's Ali Canal. Wow. Uh, from the open, the stock dropped, but mm -hmm. upon this release, it fell further. Not a great reaction to Max. Yeah, it seems to be accelerating a bit. Now, there were some things that were revealed that that had been reported on. So, for example, the name, we officially got the name as Max. There's a lot of commentary on Twitter about whether they should have dropped the HBO component of it, but the emphasis... So, this was interesting. One of the biggest comments and discussion points was the name and the title and the brand. So they went with Max, they dropped HBO, which was very contentious because that seemed to be one of their most valuable brand assets. But I think they really wanted to make sure people knew that this wasn't just HBO and that there were discovery assets coming in as well. Personally, I think whether it was HBO Max, Max, some morphin of discovery, um, I, I didn't think that that was too, too important as long as they made it catchy and, and made sure that they tested it with people and, and stuff like that, which they would obviously do for a change this big. Um, I think the pricing strategy and, and how they're planning on tackling this from a strategy standpoint is much more important than what the brand name of the, the service is, especially given the fact that they already built the service up to like 100 million people. So it's not like they're starting from scratch here, but that's just my two cents throughout this entire call was that they don't want this to just be an association with HBO and that high profile scripted content. They want to emphasize that this is a place where you have everyone in the family can go and watch something. So you have that discovery content, all the reality TV shows, Chip and Joanna Gaines, Dr. Pimple Popper, and then you can also watch Succession. Thanks for that. If you want to. sorry about that but yeah so, so that is the name of the game here it's going to be released on may 23rd it comes in three tiers the first two tiers match the current hbo max pricing so we have that ad supported option at 9.99 a month the ad free version 15.99 a month and then there's going to be this new third tier dubbed max ultimate it is ad free and it will cost 19 dollars and 99 cents a month you can get up to four so they actually have three versions here which is interesting they have a $10 version, which you have to buy um, or watch ads through. You can't do downloads, stuff like that. The $15.99 version, which is the regular version, no ads, downloads. And then they have a $19.99 version, which is the premium version. I think you get more screens that you can log in with and so on and so forth. So anywhere from $9.99 to $19.99 for the new service that's launching on May 23rd four concurrent streams up to 4k ultra streaming but guys this is pricey you know especially when you consider all that competition but again they're really leaning in on the fact that they are one of the only services that have this much content that you can dive into and that there's something for i wanted to pause on this screen here just to talk about the the pricing dynamic you can kind of see on the the netflix side um it's anywhere between like call it seven eight dollars to twenty dollars Disney Plus is $8 to $11. Apple TV is $5, but they don't have uh, too much content there. Hulu, $15 bucks ad free. Max, $16 bucks ad free. Prime Video, $15 bucks ad free. So from a pricing standpoint, you have Netflix at $15 for their standard plan. Disney Plus at $11. Hulu at $15. Max at $16. Prime at $15. I don't think they're overpriced relative to their competition. I think Disney may be a bit underpriced, but I know they still have um, an issue with hitting different types of content. So maybe that's why they're being a bit um, more conservative in, in, in their pricing. And they just took a pretty big price increase a couple quarters ago. But to be $16 just with HBO Max and now holding it at $16, I think if anything, the stock's down because they were expecting them to charge more of a premium. So it's interesting to hear some of the rhetoric here on Yahoo Finance about um, concern on the price being too much. That, that was my uh, main takeaway. This video here is interesting because you get to hear um, from David Zaslav himself, his strategy. So I want to play this video and then 
stop in between it and share I'm some Julia thoughts. Julia Borston live in Burbank, California right now for an exclusive interview with Warner Brothers Discovery president and CEO David Zaslav. Julia, it's all yours. Scott, thanks so much. Really appreciate it. We're very excited to be here today on the Warner Brothers lot for the big announcement of Max. It's coming on May 23rd. And the big headline is that it's going to cost $16 a month, which is the same cost as HBO Max, even though this will also have right. so much discovery content. You've said so many times, David, that you are focused on profitability. Why does it make sense to charge the same amount and give more content? First, we want a, uh, a really seamless transition. We have a, a very significant business with HBO Max right now with subscribers that love it, and they're paying $16. To provide more value to those subscribers and have a seamless transition, I think will be really helpful to us in terms of, number one, secure the strength and the power that we have in the market right now. In addition, the one of the big issues with this business for everybody is churn. And... So two things there. The first thing on seamless transition. I think what he's dancing around is concern over executional issues of going up in price. He has 100 million people paying 16 bucks a month now. If he goes up to $18 a month and not all of those 100 million people know, will people automatically get, um, automatically get unsubscribed? Um, will there be some people that are just pissed that the price went up and just unsubscribe. How many of those people are you going to lose if you increase the price? So I think he just wants a seamless transition, moving all the users over to the new platform before doing anything rash, before doing anything major on pricing. You can look at that a couple different ways. You can look at that as him not having confidence in their ability to execute something as complicated as a price increase at the same time as they're moving over and streamlining a platform. Um, you can look at it as him being worried about if he has the pricing power to demand a higher price. Honestly, I think they are just being safe on this one. They do not want to be doing a price increase at the same time they're doing this to minimize the risk of a disaster happening and losing tons of subscribers behind the move, uh, even though they're providing more value in terms of content. So I think they're just being safe. They want to see how it goes, um, which I think is fine. Um, but I think that's pretty much where they're at. And if it goes well um, and subscribers have increased engagement, so on and so forth, price increases will come down the line. The second thing he just mentioned is churn. So it looks like that how they're justifying this economically internally, I'm sure they have synergies on the back end by not having to operate two platforms. But if you're losing a percent of your subscribers a month and all of a sudden um, because of the additional d discovery content that goes down to half a percent, essentially you're in a weird way growing your subscriber count by half a percent a month, which was like 6% a year. And with a business that is as scale focused as streaming, that could hopefully compound over time and, and on 100 million subscribers, 6 million subscribers a year that don't leave your platform that are paying you $200 a month. You can just do some quick math there. 6 million times 200 is over a billion dollars in, in cash. So that's on an annual basis under those super quick assumptions I just made up. But that's what he's saying. He's like, we're not going to get as many incremental people in maybe behind this, but churn's going to go down significantly on the people that get attracted by the high budget films that Warner Brothers Discovery produces and puts on the platform. And by, by increasing the amount of content we have on the platform, content for kids, content for families, nonfiction content, food, home, motion, the biggest motion picture and TV library, by putting that whole bouquet of content, we think the broadest array of content available, uh, that the churn will come down. So it'll be a significant amount of economic gain for us just by subscribers feeling more nourished, happier, less churn, more people in the family using it. And that's the basis of a healthy subscription service. So in addition to that $16 ad-free version, you are going to have a lower-cost version with ads. Do you have any plans to have a free ad-supported version? And how concerned are you about an overall ad contraction, especially when there are more ad players in the market, such as Netflix? Well, uh, 
HBO Max has a nice amount of Ad Light subscribers already. So Max starts off with a with a nice base. And nine ninety nine. When you look at the marketplace, the traditional marketplace around the world, there are people that are willing to pay a fair amount of money to get premium and have it be ad ad free. Then there's you know, there's people that are willing to pay less, but they'll take they'll they need to accept advertising, which is sort of like basic cable around the world. And then there's a big population of people that only want free, that are never going to pay. And so it's important for us as the largest provider of content, we have the biggest TV library and most picture library in the world, that we make our great content available to everyone. So I like what he said there. He really summed that up nicely in terms of. If you look around the world where Warner Brothers Discovery is a global company, there's going to be people who want um, the, the, the best version, which is no commercials, high quality content. Some people are willing to pay a bit less, watch some ads. And then there's some people or a lot of people that just will not spend money on entertainment like this. So they need to be sure they're making products to hit the whole market, given they have just so much inventory so much assets in terms of in terms of content they want to monetize it all and they can do so in different ways to maximize the value um, of those assets that shareholders own so i like what he said there and he's essentially knocking on the door of hey we should eventually at some point they have a lot of priorities right now but have a a free service that we just load up with advertising and monetize through advertising given how much inventory and content they have, I think that's probably a good direction to go in terms of a supplementary um, business that, that they look at building up. So this was a big day for us with, with launching Max on the 23rd. We will have a fantastic service at 16. We're also going to have the ad light at 999 and it'll be robust. We've started to offer AVOD channels with other providers, but you will see an AVOD service from Warner Brothers. You will see a Warner Brothers TV that's free. So there you have it. You, they, they have already started licensing some content to other um, providers who provide free um, content and just load it up with ads. But they already have ambitions that they're going to be doing it all themselves and, and own the end-to-end the -end chain there. So that makes sense uh, as, as an aside, uh, given the amount of content they have. It looks like it's something they're already focusing on. So... What are my thoughts on this? First of all, I want to talk about stock. So stock's trading up $14 a share. If we look this year, average estimate thinks they're going to slightly lose money. Okay. And for the record, they lost almost four bucks a share in 2022. Huge, given the size of this business. Lots of this was a tax write-off. It's, it's really hard to unpack this number. So let's look forward. They're going to be, let's give them the benefit of the doubt and say break even this year. Now, they have very polarizing estimates for next year. Some analysts think they're going to lose money next year. Some analysts think they're going to make a huge amount of money. Average analyst, which is what we'll go with, says they're going to make about 90 cents a share. So with a $14 share price, they're trading on an average analyst estimate at about 15 to 16 times 2024 earnings. Given the amount of debt on this company, the competitors in this industry, all of these big tech companies wanting a bite out of entertainment and, and media. That does not seem like that cheap of a price to be paying for a company that hasn't delivered yet, hasn't shown they can execute, is bundling a lot and dealing with a lot of, of new change and, and new products, um, has $50 billion of debt essentially. Um, so this is a company that from a valuation standpoint, it looks like it could be an interesting company to trade around with. Um, because they do own great assets and they do swing up and down quite a lot. But I would not be overly interested in owning this stock through this. Who knows? Maybe they'll absolutely blow it out of the water like that top analyst said. Make two to three bucks a share and the stock will look cheap next year. Even if they make three bucks a share, they probably have about 20 bucks a share in debt that they need to start working on paying off. So it's not like they can reinvest that money to accelerate growth to a great extent. They really have to pay off debt for the most part. So I'm not overly excited by this stock. In terms of the news that we heard today around the naming of the company, I don't really care about the naming. I Everyone knew this was going to happen, whether it's Max or HBO Max. Everyone knew what the strategy was. Uh, the pricing, I think... Um, 
I would have imagined or would have felt better if they went up on price, made the, made me really would match their narrative on how combining these two would be the best streaming product in the market and it's going to be priced like that. They've always been a premium on HBO Max. Everyone else just kind of caught up to them recently. So I thought they were going to take this as an opportunity to price, um, but it seems like they're just concerned on how that will get executed. So they kind of shied away from that, which I honestly think is the main reason the stock went down today. But overall, I think making these two into one bigger streaming platform and, and growing it from here is the best option. They don't have to have two different teams running two different platforms. They get lots of backend synergies and hopefully with time they can maximize value with the consumer and the price that they're paying every month. So ultimately, I think the news today wasn't too bad. On a day-to-day -day basis, I think minus 6% in the market today is a bit harsh. Um, but with that being said, on an overall basis, I still think this stock is not one that I am interested in just based off of the huge debt load. In fact, they're not going to make any money this year. And even next year, they're not trading at that cheap of a multiple. So that's my thoughts on Warner Brothers Discovery and the news that just broke today on this media stock. If you like this type of content, please give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel. would love to hear from you in the comments, especially if you made it to the end. I really appreciate it a lot. Not many people do. So let me know in the comments if you do. would love to hear from you. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.